Hey, what's up guys? It's Nico of Camp Crunch, and today I'm going to do my best to teach you guys the basics of photography. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the three functions of your camera that you need to know to get the proper exposure to get the nice looking images that you want. I know that photography can be really intimidating when you're first starting off. I was there at one point, I saw these, you know, big words, big numbers, and I just didn't know how to use my camera and I couldn't get those images that I wanted. But if you break down photography to its basics and you understand what causes change in your images, then it's gonna be much easier to get that image that you want. And I assure you guys, by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of photography and you'll be more confident to get that image that you want. When you see a nice looking image, that means the camera is actually capturing the right amount of light that you need to expose that image properly. And that exposure is determined by three things, the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. And those are, you know, the features of your camera that you need to know in order to get the proper exposure for the images that you guys want to take. And it's really simple. The first thing is the aperture, which is basically the opening of the lens or the size of the opening of the lens. And if you look at your lens, you'll see the iris or the aperture blades and they open and close depending on where your aperture value is. And naturally, the bigger your aperture size is, the more light comes in, and the smaller your aperture size is, the less light comes in. And that is determined by an f-stop value of your camera, and you will see it. If it's a number like f1.8, that means it's a big aperture and more light is coming in. And if it's something like f16 or f22, that means it's a small aperture and less light is coming in. Now there's a secondary effect with your aperture, and that is that it affects the depth of field. And you will hear this word a lot as you know, you're learning more about photography. And depth of field is basically how much of your image is in focus. If you have a shallow depth of field, that means your subject is in focus, but its foreground and its background will not be in focus. And if you have a wide depth of field or a large depth of field, that means a lot of your image is in focus. So it's not just what you're focused on, but you know, its foreground and its background will also be in focus. And if you want that blurry background, if you want the shallow depth of field, you will need a smaller f-stop value, which is a bigger aperture. So again, f1.8 will let in a lot of light because it's a big aperture size, and it will also have that shallow depth of field. So if you're shooting at f1.8 or f2, something like that, your subject will be in focus, but the foreground and the background will not be in focus, and you'll get a lot of light. If you have a large depth of field, that means you're shooting with an aperture value of something very big. So something like F16 or F22 or something like that. And that means a lot of your image will be in focus, but you're also getting less light into your camera. Now, the second thing that affects exposure is your shutter speed. And that is basically how fast your shutter opens and closes or how long your exposure takes place for. So the faster your shutter speed opens and closes, the shorter your exposure takes place for. What that means is that you get less light into your image. And the slower your shutter speed is, that means your exposure is longer, that means you get more light into your image. But it also affects how much is blurred in your image. The faster your shutter opens and closes, that means you have fast exposure, that means it gives less time for anything in your picture to move around. That means less stuff in your picture will actually be blurred. But if your exposure takes place for a long time, that means a slower shutter speed, more light comes into your image, but it also gives time for the subjects to move around, which will cause blurring your images. It's the same for if you're holding the camera. If you're taking a fast exposure, that means even if you move the camera, your picture will be perfectly sharp. But if you take a longer exposure and you're hand holding the camera, it gives more time to actually capture that shake. So if it's a long exposure and you're holding your camera, you will see some blur because of you know your hand moving around ever so slightly, but you'll see it in your image. Now, the third thing that affects the exposure of your image is the ISO. And the ISO is basically the sensitivity of the image sensor found in your camera. The lower your ISO is, the less sensitivity it is to light. That means you'll need more light to expose your image. And the higher your ISO, the more sensitive it is to light. That means you'll need less light to expose your image. The trade-off with ISO is that the higher you raise your ISO, the more grain or the more noise you will see in your image. So you'll see like these little dots in your image and that is caused by higher ISO. And you don't necessarily want that in your image because noise, it doesn't only just put those you know dots into your image, but you know, high noise will desaturate or really saturate your image, will give, which will give you unrealistic colors. And you don't want that with your images. Well, most of us don't want that with our images. So these are the three things that you need to understand about your camera. The aperture, 
which again determines how much light comes into your sensor, but it also determines your depth of field, your shutter speed, which will determine how long your exposure takes place for, which will determine how much of your image will actually be blurred or not blurred, and your ISO, which will determine how sensitive your sensor is, and it will determine how much grain you have in your image. And if you understand these three things, you just need to learn how to balance them out in order to get the right images. I'll give you an example of how to balance your exposure depending on the image that you want. And the example that I'm going to give you is an outdoor portrait where you want the background to be blurred. So you know that it's going to be outdoor in the sun and you want your background to be blurred. In this case, I would first set the ISO to 100, as low as you can, so that you don't get any digital artifacts, you don't get any noise and you want your background to be blurred so you'll set your lens to something like f1.8, f2, whatever you can, you know, the lowest number will give you the biggest aperture, will give you that blur that you want, so lower f-stop number. And with these in mind, the only thing you need to think about is the shutter speed. You already set your two things and you only need to set your shutter speed. So you just need to keep changing your shutter speed until you find the right exposure. And over time you'll learn how to do this naturally. So you'll set these two and you'll you'll know the lighting situation you're in and you'll know what shutter speed to set your, you know, shutter speed to, uh, well, the range at least. I'll give you another example. You're going to be indoors and you're taking pictures of sports. You'll want a fast shutter speed, so something over 1 500th of a second, let's say. So you set your shutter speed to 1 500th of a second and you want a lot of light to come into your sensor. So what you'll do is you'll set your aperture to as low as you can. So a lower number will give you a bigger aperture, which will give you more light. So you'll set your aperture to f2.8 if you're using a 2.8 lens. So you have your shutter speed set and you have your aperture set. You take the picture, it's really dark. That's because your ISO is really low. So you'll bump up your ISO slowly until you get the right exposure. So it's all about balancing things out. And once you learn how to balance things out, photography gets so much easier. You'll learn this over time, but as you learn it, it's going to be more natural to you and you'll find it easier to take the, you know, the pictures that you want. This is what I did and you know, I take pretty decent photos now. I'll leave my Flickr link down below for you guys to see. In some cases, you'll find that you're setting your shutter speed, aperture and ISO to you know, whatever you can. You keep trying and your image is still dark. You can't get the right exposure. You're going to need to add more light and that's in the form of a flash, but that's a whole nother video. I hope you guys like this video. I hope it really helped you understand photography, the basics of photography and what it takes to get the right exposure. I'm going to have more videos. Just check my channel. Again, I'm Nico of Cam Crunch and I'll see you guys next time. If you guys haven't yet, the social links are down below. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, ask questions in the comment box down below and I hope I can help you out. That's all. Peace.